Are you muted? Thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we have to come before you this day with grateful hearts, thankful for all that you do, how you reveal to us your word and the truth that sets us free. So we just ask you, Father, that you lead and guide and direct this, this day and everything that we do be pleasing and honorable to you. It's your will be done, Father. And we just give you thanks this day. Hallelujah. We've been on a journey since Pesach. And because of this journey, it's put things into perspective for me. I see his loving mercy and kindness in such deep ways that I've not recognized before. And because of this and going through this process of these feasts and gaining this deeper revelation and understanding about what this all represents and means to us has led me to a place where I had to examine all that he has done all that he's been revealing going through this process of each one of these feasts and how we have to examine ourselves and how we have to look into who we really truly are. And then we get to see him for who he is and what he's offering to those that he has called. And going through this process and seeing that he is using these feasts to prepare his people so that they are ready and prepared for that day that no man knows the day or the hour. He takes us through this process on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and through these feasts throughout the year so that his people become closer to him. They have more trust in him. And they allow him to move in their lives and transform them. And this is the product of all of that that we see in our lives today. Because we take this serious, because we are, are pressing in with all of our strength and all of our might and everything that we have within us and who we are, he's revealing to us who he is, the things that he's done for us. And that's the basis of this study today. Because as I was going through this last feast and really meditating on what it represented and what does it mean for us to, when he calls us into his presence, what does he want us to do? How are we supposed to live our lives to him? And he has revealed these things very clear to me through his feast this year that I've not seen before. And it brought me to a place of deep gratitude and thanksgiving because I truly see his love and his mercy. So what I would like for us to really do is meditate on those things that he has done for you where he's brought you from. And as we go through these scriptures today, see yourself in them. Hallelujah. Because sometimes this really is a sacrifice to offer praise and to give thanks. We not feel like it. We're struggling. We're weary. Or maybe we feel like we have, let, have been let down. We think Yahuwah seems distant like he's far away, or doesn't really care about what's troubling us. Painful life blows and losses might have recently sent us spiraling. But here's what can make a lasting difference. We have a choice every day to give thanks to Yahuwah. 
And with the heart of thanksgiving, we realize that no matter what we face, Yahuwah doesn't just work a change in our situations and help us through our problems. He does more. He changes our hearts, his power, through hearts of gratitude and focused minds on him, releases the grip of our trials over us. We're strengthened by his shalom, refueled by his joy and empowered by his ruach. See, gratitude is an expression of thankfulness and praise. A general attitude of thanksgiving is both the trials and the baraka of our lives, distinguishes the believer. Shaul exhorts us in scripture to give thanks for all things in all circumstances, which we find in Ephesians 5.20. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, even in suffering, Romans 5, verses 3 through 5, and James 1, 1 through 4, and to do everything in the name of Yahuwah, out of a spirit of gratitude, according to Colossians 3.17. So as a believer, we can have shalom and joy through prayer and gratitude. And when we pray and give thanks to Yahuwah, even when it's hard to, that's the, the challenge. That is the thing that we must overcome when we don't feel like it, when it's hard to. But there's seven things that the power of a grateful heart can do. It gets our eyes off of ourselves, and it helps us to focus back on Yahuwah. It reminds us that Yahuwah is the giver of all good gifts. We were never intended to be fully self-sufficient in this life. A grateful heart reminds us that ultimately Yahuwah is our Yaira, our provider. That all Baraka, all blessings and gifts are graciously given to us by his hand. It reminds us that we're not in control, but that we serve a mighty Alhim who is. It keeps us in a place of humility and dependency on him as we recognize how much we need him. It helps us to recognize we have so much to be thankful for, even all of the little things, which often we may forget to thank him for, but they really are the biggest, most important things in this life. It takes our attention off of our problems and it helps us instead to reflect on him, to remember him, the goodness of his many baraka. A heart of gratitude leaves no room for complaining, for it is impossible to be truly thankful and filled with negativity and ungratefulness at the same time. It makes the enemy flee. The forces of darkness can't stand to be around hearts that give thanks and honor to Yahuwah. Our praise and thanksgiving will make them flee. It also opens up the door for continued Baraka. It invites his presence. Our spirits are refreshed and renewed in him. Yahuwah loves to give good gifts to his children. He delights in our thankfulness and pours out his ruach in favor over those who give honor and thanks with a grateful heart. Let's take a look at this word that means giving thanks. Yada. Spelled with a, a, a yod, which means to work, to throw, and to worship. Also a deed. The door is that, uh, is the letter is the next letter, which is the door, it's the pathway. And then it also has a hay, which means to look, reveal your breath or a sigh. Thanksgiving is the other word that we see here. Tuda. Spelled with a, a towel which is a mark, a sign, a covenant, a signature, a monument, a ua, add, secure, hook, nail, pay, and a, a delet, but again, means the door, a pathway, and a hey, look, reveal, breath, and sigh. So as we can see, giving thanks through our work, throwing up our hands in worship, and even in our deeds, this is the doorway, it's that pathway that allows us to, to, to see that is revealing who we are in our breath, in our, in our sighs, in our, in our confessions, in our worship, in our thanksgiving, in our praise. 
That's what he desires of us. Because Thanksgiving is a covenant that we have established or that he has established with us and that we engage in because we are secured. He has added us. He has secured us with that nail, which is that doorway. Yahusha is that doorway, that pathway to allow us to look and to see and to declare it with our breath. That we are thankful to him for leading and guiding and directing our path, our lives. Oh, Yada, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Second Chronicles 20, verse 21. Psalms 89, 1. Psalms 118, verses 1 through 4. And Psalms 136. Yahuwah's word is filled with many reminders of how powerful and vital a thankful heart can be in this difficult world. Psalms 136 verses 1 through 26 says, Yada, or give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Yada, to the Alhim of Alhim, for his steadfast love endures forever. Yada, to Adon of Adon's. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the Shemayim. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to him in all circumstances. For this is the will of Yahuwah in Yahushua HaMashiach according to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always and for everything to Yahuwah, the Father, in the name of our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.15-17, and let the shalom of Mashiach rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, to be thankful. Let the word of the Mashiach dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to Yahuwah. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Adon Yahusha, giving thanks to Yahuwah the Father through him. Pretty clear. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. 2 Corinthians 9, 15, Thanks be to Yahuwah for his inexpressible gift. Praise Yahuwah. Psalms 106, 1, Praise Yahuwah. Oh, Yada, which means give thanks, to cast out, to make a confession. Praise, give thankful to Yahuwah. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Do we think about that when we are giving thanks? We're making a confession, we're praising him. We're giving a thankful praise of of our hearts to him. He desires us to be loving on him, to be thankful and grateful to him. He goes, oh, Yada, give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Enter into his gates with Toda, thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Halu. Toda to him, Barak his name. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Adon Yahusha, giving thanks to Yahuwah the Father through him. Colossians 3.17. Colossians 4, verse 2 says, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in our prayers. Thanksgiving in our daily walks. Being thankful and grateful because you're recognizing what he's doing, who he is, and how much he loves you. Psalms 30, verse 12, that my glory may sing your praises and not be silent. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, I will, Yada, I will give you thanks 
forever. Psalms 118, verses 1 through 18. Oh, yada to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Yeshua say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear Yahuwah say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I call on Yahuwah. Yahuwah answered me and set me free. Hallelujah. That's something to be thankful for. Romans 1.21, for although they knew Yahuwah, they did not honor him as Alhim or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Psalms 95, 2, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Philemon 1, 4, I thank my Alhim always when I remember you in my prayers. Do you thank Yahuwah when you pray for others? You know, it's an honor to be able to pray for somebody. Because we get the privilege to come before our Father on behalf of our brothers and sisters. And reveal our love and our caring for them. And our trust in the one that can help them. That can keep them. That can provide for them. So we give thanks. Thanks. Always, even in prayer. Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5, a psalm for giving thanks. Make a joyful noise to Yahuwah, all the earth. Serve Yahuwah with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that Yahuwah, he is Alhim. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yada to him. Barak his name, for Yahuwah is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. First Chronicles 16.34 says, Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Hallelujah. Endures forever. Psalm 7, verse 17, I will yada to Yahuwah. I will give thanks to Yahuwah. Due to his righteousness, and I will sing praises to the name of Yahuwah the Most High. First Chronicles 29, 13, and now we thank you, our Alhim, and we praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Yahuwah today and forevermore. Psalms 9, verses 1 to 2. I will yada, I will give thanks to Yahuwah with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. First Chronicles 16, verse 8. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among all the people. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, verses 16 and 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Yahuwah in Yahushua HaMashiach for you. Psalms 118.28, you are my Alhim, and I will yada. I will give you thanks. I will give thanks to you. You are my Alhim, and I will extol you. Psalm 69.30, I will praise the name of Yahuwah with a song. I will magnify him with todah, with thanksgiving. Colossians 2, verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in Amunah, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Psalms 28, 7, Yahuwah is my strength and my shield. In him my trust, or my heart trust, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I yada, I give thanks to him. Romans 5, 1, therefore, since we have been justified by Amunah, we have shalom with Alhim through our Adon Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I love his shalom in my life. I need more of it. 
Philippians 1.3, I thank my Elohim in all my remembrance of you. 1 Corinthians 15.57, but thanks be to Yahuwah who gives us the victory through our Adon Yahusha HaMashiach. Do you have victory today? Because you should, because it's a promise. It's something that he has given to us as victory over this life. Victory is yours to be had because it's something that he gives us as his children. He wants us to be overcomers in this life so that we can give thanks to him. Why would you give thanks if, if you didn't ever have anything good coming your way? If you didn't have anything to look forward to in this life? If you didn't have anything to look forward to after this life? When we plug in and we realize who he is and we start to see him moving in our lives, that he's restructuring us, that he's renewing our minds and our thinking, and we see our lives changing, that's a reason to give thanks. Hallelujah. For 1 Corinthians 1.4, I give thanks to my Alhim always for you because of the grace of Yahuwah that was given you in Yahushua HaMashiach. 2 Corinthians 4.15, for it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of Yahuwah. Do we know that there was so much in scripture that is basically telling us or commanding us to give thanks, to be thankful? People don't probably think about those things, but it's important. Psalms 35, 18, I will thank you in the great congregation, in the mighty throng, I will praise you. First Timothy 4, verses 4 through 5, For everything created by Elohim is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with toda, with thanksgiving. For it is made kadosh by the word of Elohim and prayer. Psalms 116, 12, What shall I render to Yahuwah for all his benefits to me? Revelation eleven seventeen, saying, We give thanks to you. Yahuwah Alhim, Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. 1 Thessalonians 3, 9, for what thanksgiving can we return to Yahuwah for you? For all the joy that we feel for your sake before our Alhim. Romans 1, 8, first I thank my Alhim through Yahusha HaMashiach for all of you because your amuna is proclaimed in all the world. And I do give thanks to Yahuwah, through Yahusha for each one of you. Psalms 22, verses 1 through 31. My Alhim, my Alhim, why have you forsaken me? That sound familiar? This is in Psalms. Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning? Oh, my Alhim. I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are kadosh, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Yasserel, and you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. Psalms 34, 1 of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. I will barak Yahuwah at all times, for his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 107 8, let them thank Yahuwah for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. Psalm 75 1, we give thanks to you, O Yahuwah. We give thanks, for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. Ephesians 1, 11, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Hebrews 12, verses 28 and 29, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving the kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to all him acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our Alhim is a consuming fire. 
Psalms 50 verse 14, offer to you who a sacrifice of todah, of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. First Timothy 1, and 2, uh, 1 verse 12, I thank him who has given me strength. Yehusha HaMashiach our Adon, because he judged me faithful, appointed me to his service. James 4, verses 6 to 12, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, Yahuwah opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to Yahuwah. Resist Hasatan the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to Yahuwah, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before Yahuwah, and he will exalt you. James 1, verses 1 through 27 says, James, a servant of Yahuwah and of Adon Yahusha HaMashiach, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. Greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your amuna produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect in you, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask all him who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Psalms 116, verse 17, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of Yahuwah. Interesting that he calls this a sacrifice of thanksgiving. They need to ponder on that for a minute. Isaiah 12, 4, and you will say in that day, Yada to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Ezra 3.11, and they sang responsively. Halu, Hallel, praising and yada, giving thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever towards Yisrael. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised Yahuwah because the foundations of the house of Yahuwah was laid. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the Kadosh believers in light. Psalms 145, verses 1 through 21, a song of praise of David. I will exalt you, my Alhim and King, and barak your name forever and ever. Every day I will barak you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is Yahuwah and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1, first of all, then I urge that supplication, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Mashiach dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to Yahuwah Alhim. Jonah 2, 9, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to Yahuwah. Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7, therefore, as you received Yahushua HaMashiach, the Adon, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the Amuna, or the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Jeremiah 30, verse 19, out of them shall come songs of thanksgiving and the voices of those who celebrate. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will make them honored and they shall not be small. That's a powerful promise. Psalms 118, 24, this is the day that Yahuwah has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Romans 8, 28, and we know that for all, those who love all him, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Psalms 50, verse 23, the one who offers todah, 
thanksgiving as his sacrifice glories me. To one who offers his way rightly, I will show the salvation of all him. Acts 24, verse 3, in every way, in everywhere, we accept this with all gratitude. Psalms 118, verses 20 and 29, you are my Elohim, and I will yada to you. I will give thanks to you. You are my Elohim. I will extol you. O yada to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. That's something to get excited and be thankful for, that it endures forever. And we will be with him forever if we endure to the end. Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, let us continually offer up sacrifices of praise to Alhim, that is the fruit of lips that acknowledges his name. Ephesians 1, verses 16 and 18. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Alhim of our Adon Yahushua HaMashiach, the Father of glory, may give you a, a, a ruach of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the Kadosh believers? That's a lot. That's powerful. Let me read that one more time. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Alhim of our Adon Yahusha HaMashiach, the Father of glory, may give you a ruach of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the Kadosh believers? That's something to get thankful for. 2 Corinthians 2.14, But thanks be to Yahuwah, who is in Mashiach, always led us in triumphal procession. And through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Barak Yahuwah, O my soul, and all that is within me. Barak his Kadosh name. Barak Yahuwah, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalms 92.1, a song for the Sabbath. It is good to Yada to give thanks to Yahuwah, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. But we give you thanks today, for we see it clearly. This is something we need to continue to do in a more exerted way. Give thanks. Be grateful. Thank him for who he is creating you to be and that he's in your life, that you see him, that you're knowing who he is, that you're not lost in this dark world anymore. He has set you free. Be thankful. Lamentations 2.23, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Philippians 4, verses 6, 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Yahuwah. And the shalom of Yahuwah, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Yahushua HaMashiach. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is an excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians 4, verses 12 and 13, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any, in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He prepares you in every situation, in every aspect of your life, if you trust him, if you allow him to lead you, he will strengthen you. He will empower you. He will even encourage you. 
but we have to give thanks in all things. That's hard to do. We don't understand how to do that yet. Not all of us. There may be some out there to do, but I can tell you when you're in the middle of something that's, that's troubling you, that's stressing you out, it's real hard to be thankful, but you need to press through that and remember this. And that'll help you through those difficult times. James 1, verses 2 and 4, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your amuna produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 7 and 9, For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that they or that you did not receive. Let me start that over again. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. So we need to be thankful where we have plenty or when we have not so much. We don't have a reason to boast about anything because it's all received from him. It's all given by him. Second Thessalonians 1 verse 3. We ought always to give thanks to Yahuwah for you, brothers, as in right, because your amun is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. That's what I see in this assembly. I see that our love is growing abundantly for one another and for him. He is increasing. He is providing those things. Those, we are just embracing what he is creating in us. So we got to be thankful for all our brothers and sisters that walk with us. Giving thanks to him for bringing them out of the world. Psalm 66, verses 1 through 20, shout for joy to Yahuwah, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to Yahuwah, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Say, La, come and see what Yahuwah has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of man. He is awesome in every way. He is Yahuwah, hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahuwah al hallelujah. Philippians 1, verses 1 through 30. Shaul and Timothy, servants of Yahushua HaMashiach, to all the Kadosh believers in Yahushua HaMashiach who are at Philippi. With the overseers and deacons, Grace to you and shalom from Yahuwah our Father and the Adon Yahushua HaMashiach. I thank my Elohim in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel or the good news from the first day until now. Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. At that time, Yahushua declared, I thank you, Father. Adon, or the master, or the Lord of the Shemayim and earth, that you may have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and reveal them to little children, or those that come as little children. Psalms 40, verses 9 and 10, I have told the, the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips as you know. O Yahuwah, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Hallelujah. Psalms 119.1 through 176. Baruch are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. Baruch are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. 
Ephesians 5, verses 18 and 20. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Ruach, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to Yahuwah with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to Yahuwah the Father in the name of our Adon Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Be thankful and grateful in everything, in every way. And it will change your life because it's changing your confession. Therefore, it's going to change what's in your heart. Second Corinthians 9, verses 11 and 12, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to all him. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the, the saints or the the, the, the Kadosh believers, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to Yahuwah. Second Corinthians 4, verses 15 and 16. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of Yahuwah, so that we do not lose heart. Through our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Psalms 95 verses 1 through 3. Oh come, let us sing to Yahuwah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For Yahuwah is a great Alhim and a great king over all, or above all Alhims. And finally, Number six, verses 24 and 26. Yahuwah barak you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Praise you, Father. We thank you for who you are, for your word, for what your word reveals to us, to reveal the way that we should live our lives. And the more we walk, the closer we get the more thankful we are to you for all that you have done and that you continue to do within us. So, Father, we pray as we continue this, this discussion on this subject this morning that you will move within the hearts of your people, that you will stir us to give you more praise and thanksgiving in our lives, and that this will be an edifying conversation today that will allow us to see more clearly how to praise your name, how to give thanks to you in a more intimate way. So let this discussion that we're about to have edify you, Father. We give you praise and honor and all esteem today. Hallelujah. All righty. I hope that you could see within these verses today the importance of recognizing him in every area of our life, in every way that he is moving in us, when he's stirring us, and he's directing our paths, and we see that, that he is involved in our lives, it should bring you great joy and thanksgiving to know that your Elohim is with you always, and that you have a lot to be thankful for, even when it seems as though you don't, but you know that he's with you. And he's going to keep you. He's going to get you where you need to be. Keep pressing in. Brother Rod, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are this morning because I don't know if I did, was able to, uh, to, to reveal what he's been showing to me through this, but I, I, I hope that it, that, it, that it has been shown that he's really stirred something in me about this. And I think I was lacking in this area in some ways, you know. And uh, he's got my attention now. So I want your thoughts on this, brother. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to you, brother, and to everyone. Um, I, th I thought it was a beautiful message um, in that it, it was a reminder of what we meet, need to be constantly reminded of, if that makes sense. Um, and, and, you know, and I do think, I, I mean, 
with my private conversations with you, I do think um, it it did come out in the message some of the things that, that uh, you're being awakened to. But you know, there are specific things that it did that you didn't talk about that you know I'm sure your guys doing with you and in you. Um, but one of the things that stood out to me, um, and I think is very important, if not the most important thing. Is in the very beginning you said we think that Yahuwah seems or is distant. And <clears throat> um there's a there's another interesting part about that statement that I'll tell you later. I don't think I need to say it now, but every scripture you read if not all, the majority of scriptures had nothing to do with happy, smiling, tiptoeing through the tulips, skip, skip to Malou type of idea. <laughs> they all had to do with, with going through calamity, going through destructive, uh, uh, a destructive time frame. Um, you look at, you know, the passages you read in, um, you know, in Psalms, you know, David going through war, David being, uh, you know, sin being revealed to him, going through a time of calamity. You, you look at the letters um, that, that you shared scriptures from where Paul was in prison or after he got whipped when they were facing, you know, imminent death from the Roman Empire. You know, all of these things, all the letters from the, from the other brothers, um, Job, you know, in his situation, it's 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 screaming out to us. These are the times when thankfulness needs to be at the forefront of your mind and on the very tip of your lips. You know, it reminds me of Isaiah eight seventeen, which says, "And I will wait on Yahuwah, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him." Like the black cloud separating Yahuwah's face from his people, but yet he's saying, no, it's him that I have hope in, it's him that I have trust in. And if, if we don't get anything else out of, of, out of what you uh, read it, or what you taught today and, and shared scriptures on, it's that we are to have trust we are to have confidence in, we are to uh, praise in everything that he has done. You know, all of, all of the praise that's mentioned is mentioned because of our experience we've had, we've had with him. Individually and historically, everything that he's done where he places the stamp, remember this, do this because of this, of what I did, you know, um, and, and how we have to have those memorials in our own lives in specific times and places and situations um, because it, it is not common. The world does not look at these times that we're talking about giving praise in as times to give praise. It's time to panic, it's time to run and hide, it's time to quit, you know, give up, you know, and he's saying the opposite because of what we rest our hope in. So I think that that was clear um, through the message and, and what you shared. Um, and even to the point of what you talked about as far as being away from us and appreciating us more, you know, and it's just like, you know, prior to the COVID going on, how much I used to travel for my company, you know, and then being away from, you know, my family and, and missing them and making plans for my return and even them making plans, surprise things for when I come back because of the, the time away, you know, and it also makes you appreciate, you know, what you have, what Yah has given you in the realm of fellowship, in the realm of family, in the realm of friends, when you're separated from it. There's an ailment, <laughs> there's a sickness, there's a, you know, there's even some confusion you know, what you expressed to me. So I do see all of that coming out in the message and I, I thought it was timely uh, for more reasons than one, um, but, but good job. Um, but we have to remember 
that these times <laughs> where we're told to give thanks and to give praise, it's not because of things going absolutely right, having everything we need. It's times of depravity that we can take the focus off of our situation and still keep our eyes on him. When Isaiah couldn't see his face, he said, nah, I'm waiting because that's where my hope is. So praise y'all, brother. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is this this uh this last time being away from you guys and the and the feast and it really gave me a, a a moment of reflection because I was like in a place, I was like out of water or in water without a life preserver or something. You know, I was like just, I just wasn't really sure. It was like you know, I was, I was grateful for being able to be part of that, but it was something that really made me have to examine some things in a different way. That I was like, wow, you know, I'm thankful that you're revealing these things to me because I see within what he's revealing to me that I was lacking or that I was, there was some maturing that I still had to have in my life. And because him going through that situation and, and experiencing it, and it, it really made me thankful for who he has revealed himself to be in my life so that I know his name. That was one of the big issues that I had during this time was that his, his name wasn't the one being exalted. And that troubled me. It, it, it really caused me some, some issues during that time. And I was really, really crying out to him as like, what, you know, am I not supposed to be here? Or, you know, I, it, you know, I didn't really know at the time, but he did bring me comfort during this time. And, and, it, and I felt this gratefulness that no matter where I'm at, I know he's with me. And I, and I can look to him even when it's difficult, which I found it being difficult to worship him in this environment, even though everybody was, you know, was, was uh, observing the scriptural feast. But when the worship came, it, it really troubled me because I'm not used to having other names being worshipped or honored above his. And that, that, that gave me a little bit of uh, hesitation about you know, where I was at that point. But by the end of it, I was very thankful that this was a lesson that he taught me. And like you just expressed through the scriptures, it seems like that's where we need to give our, our thanksgiving and, our, and those type of things is when we're, we're in a position where we don't feel comfortable, where we're, you know, where we're not really sure, you know, if we're walking in an appropriate way, you know, if we're not getting in there ourselves and doing things. But he revealed to me, no matter where I'm at, I need to be able to trust him for one and be able to thank him for where he's got me at that moment and use me in a way that whatever way he chooses. And that's what ended up happening at the end of it when I got past the shock of it in the beginning, you know. So, you know, you're right. That's what I was feeling and that's what I was seeing. And when he took me to the scriptures about this, it, it really almost broke me down because I was, you know, even during the, the worship and meditating on with this study, it was, it's, it's an emotional thing for me at this point where I see him in my life, like I've never seen before, even when I'm in the middle of things, um, you know, he has a way of revealing that he's there. And that brings me to that place of thanksgiving and gratitude in him that I know no matter where I go, what I'm doing, he's there beside me and he will, he will get me through it. He will empower me if I keep my focus on him. And that was kind of what I was seeing during this study. I wanted to share that in a way that would allow everybody that when they're in their difficult times and they're struggling, that they, you know, they can turn to him and cry out to him and, and he will deliver them. So thank you, brother. Brother Jadiel, are you there? I seen you for a minute. And uh, so if you're there, I'd like to hear from you this morning. I'll come up. Oh, there he is. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. You hear me? Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Um, there was one point that I wanted to bring out. Um, I appreciate your testimony of, of 
of being thankful. And I think that's one of the main things that 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 I see that you learned when you when you said that you was in a place where everything wasn't according to what you think, and then you had to recognize that um, that Yah is always with you. You know, um, the beautiful thing is that Yah is with others too, uh, even in in uh, in lack of understanding. When they approach Yah, they don't approach Yah with all knowledge. They approach Yah with whatever by faith, and Yah approaches them by faith as well. You know, so. Uh, just like he's done with all of us. So I think that there's one of the main things that, that I wanted to point out that you mentioned was the think the thankfulness, which wasn't, I think what Rod said was important. It's not like a, you know, thank you and jumping around. It's a, it's a grateful appreciation. It's a grateful appreciation. And I wanted to point out in that you mentioned Romans chapter one, verse 21. Um, and you mentioned Romans chapter 1, verse 21, and it says, Because that when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark, and professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Um, this is what, if, if we are constantly appreciative of the daily blessings, the daily uh, provisions that we receive from Yah, it would eliminate any complaint, any murmur. If the Israelites were thankful of the manna, they wouldn't have complained about um, the quail. See, the mindset, the mindset is is what the uh, what Rod said. The mindset of being appreciative and grateful is what he's trying to impute in us. Um, that the things that we have is from Yah and the things that we don't is from Yah. <laughs> you know, the things that we don't have is because Yah didn't give it to us and it's for a reason. If we constantly recognize how involved he is with us, then we will become grateful in our thinking in every area, even the things that we feel like we're missing, it will be consumed by the gratefulness and appreciation of the things that we're not missing. And I think that that's one of the things that keep us uh, walking strong. These people, they knew Elohim, but they didn't exalt him in their life as Elohim. And they were not thankful. So therefore, he was not their provider, like you mentioned in the study. He was not the one that had to do it. They had to provide for themselves. They have to hustle and bustle. And they have to wear themselves out, even unto death, to provide for themselves. Because there is no, there is no dependency in their mind, there was no stability. There was no emuna, firmness in their mind about Yah's, about what Yah is doing every moment in their life. So how can you be thankful if you don't think that he's doing anything at the moment? How can you be grateful or appreciative if you think that you are the one that has to run around and do the things that you have to do? And that when things don't come, that things have not come. When things don't come, you, we, we, it's protection. It's wisdom from Yah. He knows what not to give us. He knows what to give us. He knows how to strengthen us. He knows how to, how to build us up. You know, so that thankful, that thankful mindset is extremely important that, that you're bringing out. And if we don't grasp that thankfulness, we start to complain. And then we start to complain about one another. We start to complain about where we are. You know, oh, the fellowship is this way. Oh, this is happening here. But are you grateful and appreciative of the things that Yah did bless, that Yah, Yah did reveal to you? You know, I know many people where Yah reveals these things to them, and because there's certain elements that they wanted and is missing, they throw away everything else that Yah laid down in front of them. And that's not being thankful. That's actually being ungrateful of the things that was blessed to you because they were all thrown out because they didn't have the other elements that you wanted, you know? So there's a thing about thankfulness that's connected, directly connected to humility. And if, if it's not understood, then we're all gonna think that saying the word thank you is being thankful. That's not being thankful. Saying the word thank you is just some polite way that, you know, we decided to, to phrase ourselves, you know, to, to make a phrase out of, um, 
receiving something. It doesn't mean that you're thankful because you're saying thank you. It's a good lesson to teach your kids, definitely. But as an adult, it's a mindset. It's something that keeps you from murmuring and complaining. It's something that keeps you from depression. It's something that keeps you from all these wicked emotions that Hasatan tries to implant in our mind uh, when we're going through hard times. You know, so praise Yah that he, he's opening our minds to understand the state of being thankful. Wow, that was powerful, brother. <laughs> he, that, that was very, uh, very well put. And um, man, you're right on in every way. It's not just saying thank you. You know, it's, it's actually a heart. You know, it's, it's something within you. It's a gratitude. It's, it's something that's express, expressed from within. It doesn't even require words. You know, that's, that's the beautiful part. I'm glad you brought that out because a lot of people would say, you know, would, would think that. But it's more of a, a gratitude of the heart, a thankful appreciation for what he's done. Like you said, if you don't get everything you're expecting, you're going to throw out all the stuff that he gave you. Well, you're right. That's very ungrateful. You know, we should be receiving whatever he gives to us with thanksgiving and appreciation because there's a reason that he's delivered it to us, that he's given it into our hands, you know. So that's a great point. I thank you, brother, for bringing that out. I see Brother Rod, he appreciated it too. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 he he just reminded me of like the posture that that one have, you know, like he said, they, they it's used as a phrase. They just throw it out there. Like I can remember a conversation I had with someone, and they said, "Thank you," you know. But I'm gonna tell you like this, you know what I mean? Like, well, well, then don't use the thank you. <laughs> Are you gonna tell me like this? <laughs> it means nothing to you, you know. So very good point, brother. Very good point. You're right. That's like an empty word, isn't it? Thank you, but, you know, that, that's not thankful. That, that, that's just throwing out those words. <laughs> we can't be that way with Yahuwah. You know, that's why it's not, a, you know, our words are important, but I think it's more of a gratitude of the heart. It's something within us that we don't even have to say anything. It's just a, it's an appreciation. It's a, it's something within you're acknowledging that he has given you something that you can't get yourself or that you can't provide for yourself. Uh, you know, even in the difficult times, he's given us something that we don't always recognize. He's beside us and he will bring us and deliver us out of these things. But when we're in that state of, you know, ungratefulness and, you know, feeling unappreciative of him, that's when you're going to start seeing things taken away. You're going to see things starting to spoil because I think that that's what happened with, uh, with, the, with the Yasserites, you know, the manna. And they weren't appreciative with that, so they wanted something else. And, you know, he, he's willing to give us the desires of our heart, but we have to be thankful for what he has given us to sustain us. And I think that's really the, the point behind all of this. So praise you for, for this little bit more understanding that we have and how we ought to live our lives and 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 see the things that he's doing for us. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Brother Mecca, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, man, that, that this was an excellent, very timely message uh, for me. Um, very timely message. You know, as we all have our ups and downs. Um, you know, in those times, it's so easy, you know, when you get overwhelmed to just, you know, completely forget about the good things, you know, Yahuwah has done in our lives, you know. Um, and really how, you know, when it's, you know, when, when I look at, like, King David, you know, when, we, when I look at King David and I see how thankful he was to the Most High and how much he praised and worshipped him, you know, David was a man whose life was always hanging in the balance, you know, and he always, what, what, what makes giving thanks so much joyous is that, you know, King David and, and, and many of us, you know, in this time we're we're learning to put all of our, we're learning to put all of our trust in the most high, you know, we're, we're learning to put all of our trust in you and, and to allow him to really guide us 
um, to protect us, to provide for us. We're really leaning on him. And the more, the more you take that pressure on your, off of yourself and you put that trust into him where it should be, he really shows up. And when you, when you, you know, there's, it's like, there's, you know, man is flawed. You know, we look at, we try to put our trust in, 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 in our parents or in friends or in family, you know, and at times they're going, you know, they may let us down, you know, we, we may see a letdown, you know, but you is the one who, who always knows what is right. And he's always there for us in our time of need. You know, he's always there to provide and make sure that we have what we need to make sure that we're protected, you know? And so when I look, when I look at the value of, when I look at the value of his, his, I would say his perfect record, you know, in protecting, providing for his people, being faithful to his people. When you look at his perfect record, even for me in my life and the things that he's done, it's so much to be thankful for because you have somebody you can rely on. You know, you have, you have a power and an and Elohim that you can rely on, you know, and it's just like completely, there's nothing like that. You know, there's nothing like, there's nothing like having that power that you can put all of your trust in and, and feel, and feel safe doing it, you know? And so just, just looking at, you know, when you really understand the value of a relationship with you, it's so much to be thankful for, especially when you begin to walk and experience that relationship with him and all he does, you know, it's so much to be thankful for from the people he puts in your lives, you know, to, to the provision, everything he brings, you know, say, how can you not give thanks? You know, how can you not give thanks even through the trials that we go through? How can you not give thanks to him? How can we not honor and respect him? And so this 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 message this morning for me was like a, a, a nice check, you know, it was a nice, you know, checks and balances, you know. This was a nice this was a nice check and a nice balance that I needed. Um so I really, I really appreciate, you know all that the most high put on you to, to, to put forth this message because it's such a, it's such a vital one. You know, people want to ask the most high for so much, you know, and it's like that, you know, you have those people who just ask, 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 and they never really show their thanks and appreciation. Like, let us not be those people, you know, let us not be those people. Let us be the people that honor and thank the most high, not just after he's, giving us something but even when we don't need anything you know even when we're not even thinking about our next needs because we know he's providing for it let us make sure we give thanks in that time period before we before we even enter into you know interceding or 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 seeking the most high you know petitioning the most high let it we got to make sure we give thanks to him for all that he has done you know, and honor him for the thing that he's done and for his faithfulness to us. So hallelujah, hallelujah for this message. It was a very timely, timely message. Praise Yahuwah. His will be done. You know, he's going to get us where he needs us. And if we continue on this path with him, he's going to reveal to us what we what we need and where we're lacking. You know, he's going to make us stronger. That's what I see him doing with me through this, you know. I didn't realize or recognize until I got into that position, but I see the scripture tells us that even in those times of difficulty and stress and trials, you know, those are the things that build us up and they make us stronger. We allow, they allow us to see him, his hand in our lives during these times. When we, when we know that we can't do anything ourselves and we cry out to him and, and he intervenes, that's when things get real to you you know, and you start to think, this is going to make me stronger. That's how we have to look at these trials and tribulations that we go through in life. They're there for a reason. And it's it's hard to really say, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for the trials and tribulations. But quite honestly, those are what make us who we are 
and that revealed to us our our trust in him our our amuna in him the confidence in in him and when you when you're in that place that brings you to that place of thanksgiving and and, and gratitude that you know that you're not alone and that you don't have to do it yourself you know so hallelujah you said it perfectly that those trials when we go through them it tests our faith you know what i mean it tests that resilience are we really going to lean on him and allow him to work you know man that was i i love the way you said that hallelujah in all things give him praise and honor yeah hallelujah thank you brother shabbat shalom to you uh sister martha shabbat shalom to you are you there there you go yes hi um um shabbat shalom to everybody um i feel the message i don't know it was like a confirmation um especially what brother jadiel said um i feel that in sakota i also i took some time off i was home with my kids but i felt a little depressed because i wanted to go out to sakot somewhere else and for a moment there i was like okay i really want to do this i feel depressed i even in prayer i said it and then it's like brother jadiel said um what he gives what he allows um what he what father yeah you know what he allows you what he gives to you what he doesn't give it's all for your good because he knows what you need at that moment and at that moment i heard a teaching and i heard a voice talk to me and tell me how can you be depressed you have sakot off you're here with your children i have given you everything that you have and at that moment i felt so bad i was like oh my god forgive me father because instead of being thankful for the things that i have i'm whining complaining like the people in egypt you know that they were murmuring and ungrateful for the things that father has done for them in that moment i felt so it's like an awakening and i think this message was more of a confirmation of what i went through because okay be grateful for the things you have and not for the things you don't have and even the things that you don't have is because i don't want you to have them so i think this was just an awesome message for me at least you know personally i think it was a confirmation that my father is with me wherever i go wherever i'm at so thank you oh yeah well thank you for sharing that with us because that brings us to reality you know <laughs> who does those kind of things he brings that confirmation to us that's how he will bring, hey you're on the right path you know i got you you need to hear this you need to see this and evidently he's already provided that for you so praise your that you're hearing him and that you, you know you're seeing that truth and uh <laughs> you come here and reveal this to us and it and it and it and it's something i think that all of us can probably grasp and 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 uh and, and find ourselves in that same situation. And what you've done by going into that is realizing, hey, I need to be thankful and grateful for what he's given me and also be grateful and thankful for the things that he hasn't given me because he knows better what I need and what I don't need. You know, maybe at that moment, that could be something that could destroy you if he gave it to you. You don't know, but he knows. So thank you for sharing that, sister. It definitely is good to get confirmation when we're going through these things. So praise Yahuwah. All righty. Uh, Sister Robbie. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, uh, Brother Rick. Nice to have you back. And Shabbat Shalom to all the Mishpaka. I thank all the brothers and everyone's comments thus far on this topic of being thankful to the Father, because it certainly is a sign of who his real people are in second timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 it talks about how you know we're in the last days these are critical times hard to deal with for men will be lovers of themselves lovers of money self-assuming haughty blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful disloyal so we see that this is a mark of people who are not Yahuwah's covenant people, that they're in these hard critical times and they're uh, resorting to the fleshly desires and the ways that people are. They're not depending on Father Yahuwah or having appreciation of who he is. Maybe they don't know who he is yet, but we, we've been called out. We might've been like these people 
who go through difficult times, critical uh, situations in our lives. But because we have this thankfulness for Yahuwah and his people, we can have the opposite reaction. You know, we can have this natural affection. We can be in agreement with each other. We don't slander each other. We exercise self-control. You know, we love goodness. We are not prideful. We're not lovers of pleasure, but we're lovers of Father Yahuwah, our Elohim. So being thankful like that has been brought out, it's a protection from depression. You brought that out. That was brought out, I think, by Brother Jadiel. It's a protection from this attitude of the world. And it keeps us in agreement. It keeps us united. And it helps us to have a true form of godly devotion and not be like those who are unthankful. So I appreciate this talk. I like that new Hebrew word, yada, being thankful. That's a beautiful uh, Hebrew expression that I can add to my vocabulary. So thank all of you uh, for just being my sisters and brothers. And thank you for the assembly. Thank you, Father Yahuwah, for what you provide for us. Toda Rabbi Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Well, you're speaking my language, sister. I appreciate the thankfulness for this assembly. Uh, I've gained even more appreciation recently, and it makes me so thankful and so grateful for him building this, uh, establishing this, drawing you, each one of you here. Um, you know, I'm grateful because I didn't have this at one time in my life. And I was in a place where you just talked about where, you know, there was a time in my life where I was, I wasn't very thankful for some of the things that I was having going through some difficult times. And, you know, I started questioning some things, you know, and I may even said some things to him. I shouldn't have said at that point without really knowing who he was, but you know, he always in my life, I can look back, even in the difficult times, he's always been there even before I knew him in the way I do now. But, you know, there's been times where I <laughs> I didn't understand why I had to go through the stuff I did and why the answers weren't coming exactly when I thought they should. And, you know, all of the things that we all go through. And he's taught me a lot about being thankful and grateful and for appreciating the things that he actually has given to me, how he has helped me to grow and understand him and to help others to, to, to be able to find the same in him. Because once you understand that who he is and what he has promised us and what he does for us every day, even in the times where we don't see the provisions that we expect or that we want, you know, you see him there and you know, he's with you and he will get you through. So I just, I just appreciate all of the discussion here today because it is revealing it's giving me flashbacks of things that <laughs> that part of this lesson brought out of me. So I think I appreciate your input on that for sure. Each one of you. So praise you, Sister Poppy. Shabbat Shalom. Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. It's so good to have you back. It really is. I I got so excited. Um, thank you for this good message. Back. <laughs> I bet. Um, you you brought out something that I hadn't made the connection to before during your study, that um, back during the sacrificial system, was it, well, when it was in place, the, uh, they were still like King David and a few others, they were talking about the sacrifice of giving thanks and praise. And you don't see it or their hearts were kind of cold, my understanding. They, they didn't have that in their hearts. And so it, it really wasn't connecting to them. And I think it's just, and now, now that that system's over, we're supposed to be praising and still, still continuing. I mean, I, I guess that was always in place. That was always supposed to be part of it, but it was something lacking then. And we need to really make sure it's not lacking in us now. And we, he needs to be in the deepest parts of our heart. And, and that's, it's just beautiful. I, I just never connected that. And I, I appreciate that because it, it kind of shows me a little bit more as to what wasn't being done and what's more important, what's most important now. So thank you. Hallelujah. 
Yes, hallelujah. You know, that's interesting that you that you bring that out because that is something that stuck out to me too. I hadn't seen that before, that it's actually a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You know, there's a there's something to that I haven't really seen before, and now, I, now I'm starting to see it, how it's connecting and how important it is. And you may be right. Maybe that's part of what caused their downfall uh, and, and they're, you know, not – not really seeing him for what he's done, not being grateful, not being thankful, because we see that, how they murmured and, the, you know, the, all the things that we see throughout the Tanakh, you know, that showed how they failed in so many ways. And this is just one of them, you know, and you're right. We we have to make sure that that doesn't uh, gain, gain any kind of ground in our lives. You know, we need to continually see him and what he gives us and what he does for us you know, so that we always have that attitude of thanksgiving and appreciation for who he is and what he does for us. Because it's easy when you're in the middle of a whole bunch of terrible things to, to say, well, yeah, you know, you know, be thankful for this. You know how? You know, we can really, we can really have our attitudes changed in a negative way if we don't understand the importance of this. To me, I almost see it almost as a commandment, you know, in a sense, you know, as many scriptures as I've seen, and all of them are, are saying virtually the same thing, you know, that we need to be thankful for him and who he is and the things that he does. So we don't ever lose sight of that, you know, and start relying on ourselves and thinking it's us because, you know, we know that's not the case now. So appreciate you sister. And uh, that's some good revelation. Let's keep it going. Keep growing. And I appreciate you. I'm thankful for, for you being part of this assembly as well. So, Shabbat Shalom to you. Sister June. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Uh, welcome back. We were praying for your travels because you were going all the way from Michigan to Florida and back to Michigan. So that was a lot of mileage. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to mention two or share two things. One, I was reminded of all the, you know, personalities or persons in in Yah's word that kind of uh, demonstrated, you know, a lot of these scriptures you read today in the hard times that they were going through that they still, you know, were able to praise. Like we think about Shaul in prison, you know, that's some pretty rough times being locked up and yet he was still praising and Joseph, you know, being in prison as well. And, you know, we see how Yah turned things around and, you know, Job and, you know, he, they tried to get him to curse Yah, but he remained uh, praiseful. So I was just thinking of all the different examples of, of persons in the Bible. And I want to share too, my mom, my mother had recently, uh, I'm connected to her on Facebook and my mom's not a believer. Uh, she's not in the truth. Uh, uh, she, I believe she believes in like a quote unquote higher power, but she doesn't have like a, like a relationship with him. You would say like, it's not live. She's, she doesn't live it out or, you know, in that sense. Uh, and so sometimes I get a little annoyed with these different um, uh, videos and things. She'll, she loves to inbox to me because she, kn she knows I'm, you know, a believer, but she, kind of has no filter in what she sends, you know, so she had recently sent this video where in, it, it, it was like a video about someone who had passed away and was being escorted by a, 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 a angel being given a tour of heaven. <laughs> and they were going down a corridor and in the first room, the angels, there was a pack full of angels who were really busy and they were taking down all the prayer requests that were coming up from the people and uh, just, uh, just super, super busy. And then in the next room, it was also packed full of angels who were packaging up the blessings and the answers to the prayers and, and sending them back down to the people who were praying. I know it's crazy, but then in the next room, uh, it was only one angel sitting there with nothing to do. And the, uh, and so the person 
being taken on the tour inquired, well, you know, why is this room not busy and there's just one angel in here? And the answer was the angel said, because all the people that got answers to their prayers, um, there's no acknowledge, there was no acknowledgement or, or giving thanks for, for having the prayer answered. And so this angel is just not really busy. It only takes one person here. There's no acknowledgements coming back for all the answered prayers. And, you know, I was kind of annoyed. Like, I usually don't even watch the videos. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, like, that's not how heaven operates, or that's not, you know, but it was so funny, because it kind of aligned with your message today. And that, you know, we, so, you know, in that, I'm like, okay, well, I need to be grateful for my mother. <laughs> and even though she sends me these things, that, you know, I, I can, you know, chew the chew the meat and spit the bones, if you will, because the, the moral of the video, it, it was uh, so ironic the way it just really aligned with, you know, being, being grateful for those things that Yah provides, you know, uh, shelter over our head, food to eat, clothes to wear, you know, those, those basic things that we have that many others throughout our world don't just having our lives being alive and having health especially in this uh pandemic times if you will so all praise to yah and you know grateful <laughs> very it just it's funny how the father just uses so many things in our everyday lives and so i just wanted to share that this morning so shabbat shalom family well thank you for sharing that that is ironic but you know I think that there, there, there's some resemblance of, you know, you, you described that she really isn't a believer, but, you know, your life is a testimony witness and interesting that she sends that to you. You know, maybe there's, uh, you know, something that's going on there that you know, who's doing behind the scenes and your thankfulness will bring it to fruition. So continue to believe and pray and we'll trust you and see how things play out in the end. But you know, I trust him in all ways, and it doesn't matter what, what the circumstances are. I think that we need to be thankful and appreciative of who he is and what he does for us, even when he uses people that don't know him to speak to us and bring confirmations. Uh, it's interesting how those things work, but thank you for sharing that. Brother Nathaniel, Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom. Nice to see you again. Same here. <laughs> um, you know, you, you had mentioned, you know, and, and I felt the same way when, when we were there at that, at that feast, you know, um, it was definitely a lot different than, uh, um, than what we're, what we're accustomed to. Um, you know, like I, I hadn't been with that group in like, like, like two years or three years. And it's amazing how much growth uh, that I, that I didn't necessarily realize that I had until I, I got back in that environment again. And then I was like, wow, that's, um, it's, it's really kind of watered down in a lot of ways. Like there, there, I felt the, the Ruach was there. I felt a lot of people's intent was there, but, um, their, their accuracy of hitting that mark of, uh, of, of, you know, praising his character, you know, his name, um, you know, um, it's, it was, but then when you were saying all that, it, it reminded me, you know, um, when I when I got first called into Torah, um, you know, I I went into a I was at a messianic congregation. I didn't know, you know messianic. Let's call it for what it was uh, uh, a congregation that was mixed with heavy Judaism um, uh, and uh, just with a with a Messiah with a, with with Messiah and Judaism. It was basically missing, mixing Yahusha and Judaism, you know, with other aspects of Christianity. Is basically what it was, um, and uh, um, I I was in that congregation and. And like, after a while, I got like a, I, I understood uh, and was understanding more and more of, of the incorrect uh, things that were, I was starting to see, because they were really heavy Judaism in this other congregation, not the, the feast that we were at. They were there, but not as heavy as it was that I was at. And um, um, I, I heard the Ruach, cause I, I didn't want to go back. Uh, and I heard the Ruach tell me uh, like really, really strongly, um, I want you to to go i was com contemplating if i was going to go that next shabbat or not and I, I heard the ruach tell me i want you to go so that you can see what a bad leader is and literally when i went back there that uh that congregation i was sitting studying my scripture book in the back um 
uh, in the back room reading during Shabbat and, and like the leader came out and started screaming at me, my, like for no reason, um, uh, screaming at me in my face, screaming beside me, come over to the other side, screaming at me, screaming in front of me again and kick me out of the congregation. Um, uh, and then, and then later on recanted and said that, you know, because they didn't call the police on me that, uh, that they never kicked me out in front of a group when I, when I called them out on what happened, just a lot of nonsense, you know, but like, that's, I say all that. And I say all that for, for a purpose is because, um, the Thanksgiving that I have now and, and that we should have, like, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for who I am now because who I am now is, is walking in Torah. I have, I have things that I need to work on. I have, I have refinements that need to be made, but I'm thankful that I'm at where I'm at. I'm thankful that I'm, that I didn't, um, that I'm no longer, you know, um, uh, uh, in that worldly mindset. I'm thankful that I understand how the scriptures function, um, uh, uh, how the, how, how the structure is, you know, I remember when I was in Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, I thought that was the true religion and, and, you know, and, and I thought that was his chosen religion. Like, you know, you know, when, when Messiah was at the woman at the well, you know, you worship what you don't know. Uh, we worship what we know for deliverances of the Yahudim, you know, those who worship Yahuwah. Um, and uh, um, a lot of times we're in places uh, 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 also to learn the negative lessons too. Um, when I was, you know, and I, and I felt called at that, at that, you know, to go to that Sukkot. And I'm very happy that I, I went there because like I was on overdrive when I was there. Like um, I couldn't get more than, than a few minutes before uh, a family or an individual would stop me and like start picking the brain, uh, my, my, my brain and like asking about scriptures and asking that in it. And, and it, and, and I feel that Yahuwah, um, uh, was, was, had, had me there or had us there to, to, um, uh, help refine, you know, that part of his body, um, that are in, you know, coming out, they're in Torah, they're in feast, but they're, they have other, you know, teachings of, of Babel, of mixing that is uh, mixed worship that is, that is in there. And, um, and he uses just as he's used people that were advanced, you know, uh, you know, as, as students and put them before my path and I was picking their brain and it's all, and it's all how, how the body connects, you know, and how we're all getting stitched and, and sewn together, not as like a, a, a Frankenstein's monster, but as we're all coming into a chad in, in one wholeness. Of, 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 you know, in each in our individuality, but in, in different parts of the body as, as the, um, um, you know, the, uh, the righteous are getting more righteous and the, in the, in the, the filthy are getting more filthy, you know, as, as revelation 20 through 11, you know, states. So that's, that's, you know, for me and, and at Sukkot, it's interesting that you say that this lady, uh, we we're, she was talking to me. And she said, she said that, uh, uh, that, that she thanks him for everything. So she, she said, I, I stubbed my toe. And she's like, and my toe will hurt. And I'll thank him in the pain. And I'll thank him for, for, for whatever reason why I had to feel that pain. For whatever reason why I'm dealing with this ailment. Why I'm dealing with this problem. It's revealing things. It's helping me learn things. The good and the bad. You know, Not just thanking him when things are good. And then yelling at him and murmuring when things are bad. You know, Thanking him for the manna. Thanking him for the uh, uh, for the for the quail that he provided, you know, thanking him for pulling us out of Mitzrayim, you know, you know, um, you know, you know, the the people, you know, back then in antiquity that they're, you know, that's that's where we're at now. That's why, you know, when the second Exodus, you know, when it starts to happen, you know, in Jeremiah twenty three seven and eight, and in other places too, um, that uh, that hopefully that when when we are uh, um, the body are getting called out, that we we remember the. Uh, um, um, we remember to thank him and hopefully that we, that we, um, uh, have a better story is written on the second Exodus on the people getting called out in the second Exodus through all their trials and tribulations and difficulties that they're having to overcome that a better story is written that, that they, they don't have that murmuring that they have that thankfulness, like, you know, that is written like, you know, and all these bad things were happening, but they were all like, you know, like they were in prison and they were, and they were, they were, they were singing songs of joy and happiness. Like when Paul, was in prison you know or or whatever that is it's it's a real good lesson to have is to thank him in the in the good in the um in the bad you know um and it's interesting the last thing that i'd share on that is um um like in in my studying um when i read the scriptures cover to cover for that first time um and i and i got into and i was starting to get into psalms i i heard the ruach tell me um I want you to make a special mark next to each and every one of these verses, like make a little arrow and draw a little circle on it and make a special mark. 
And like all these scriptures that you were pulling out today in the study, <clears throat> these are these are scriptures that I had with that special mark in Psalms and in and in Proverbs. You know, basically talking about Thanksgiving being um, uh, um, being sacrificed, being uh, you know the the bulls of our lips or the prayer um, you know being sacrificed, and 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 all the um, you know Sister uh, Poppy had said that you know we're not in the sacrificial system, but then she kind of she kind of corrected it, and you know she kind of recognized you know uh, of that of that system we're still in the sacrificial system um uh, we're still we're it's just been upgraded um uh to uh, uh to to the level that it that it was originally supposed to be and was there in the first system too so you know like the bulls of our lips you know hosea 14 2 a clean offering coming out of our mouth that is acceptable unblemished unbroken uh that is that is that has been purified that goes on this on the altar you know uh that is a, a sweet uh, fragrance to his nostrils you know so i would i would say you know um uh you know one one scripture I, i'd like to say um um like in in proverbs here here's a couple in in proverbs like slaughterings of peace uh, proverbs 7 14 slaughterings of peace are with me today i've paid my vows proverbs 15 8 the slaughtering of the wrong one is an abomination to Yahuwah, but the prayer of the straight is his delight. So this is chiastic poetry. So it's saying that the slaughtering is, a, is, is, is comparable to a prayer. You can switch it around. You can say the prayer of the wrong one is an abomination to Yahuwah, but the slaughtering of the, of the straight is his delight. So here, prayer and sacrifice are being connected as the same thing. So also thanksgiving uh, and sacrifice in, in other verses too, I've, I've already said a, a lot, but can be, can be connected into the same thing. So um, it's, so this thankfulness, this, this giving thanksgiving, this, this teaching, it's been a sacrifice. Um, uh, and, and it's part of our daily sacrifice. That's what Hebrews 13, 15 through 17 is, is daily giving his uh, prayer and uh, thanks and praise to his name you know, continually, this is the continual sacrifice that we do. So um, uh, thankfulness is, is, is a huge part. And thank you for highlighting that. Like I've known it, but I, but I, I don't, I think it needed to be highlighted in my mind so that I can, I can bring it to a, a more, a more pure understanding. So Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Thank you for sharing that. And I, you know, I agree with you. Um, and I've been in that same type of situation, you know, uh, many times in my life where, <laughs> You know, it's it's hard sometimes when you when you're in a position where you don't feel comfortable and you're you're feeling overwhelmed and I don't know about stubbing my toe. That's a hard one to be thankful for. But you know, I understand the analogy that she was sharing that in everything we should be thankful and appreciative. You know, uh, our difficult times and in even our prosperous times. You know, uh, it shouldn't change the the confession. It shouldn't can change the, the appreciation and the thanksgiving for what he's already given us and who he is creating us to be. Uh, I've been on that same type of a journey as you. You know, I've been in the messianic movements. That's what this you know, was, basically. It took me back to that place. But I'm thankful that I was there, too, because it revealed to me areas of my life that I still need some work on, you know, and uh, it really made me think about it and ponder you know, what I was experiencing, what I was feeling, you know, and uh, it, it, it did give me a breakthrough, you know, that the study is about that, you know, and just like you as a reminder to me, you know, that I that I need to be thankful and, and, and grateful for even the trials and tribulations of my life so that, you know, he gets credit for all. So thank you for bringing that out, brother. You know, one, one last thing on that, I, I, I just say is like, it can always be worse. So like, if like, like, oh man, I just stubbed my toe. Someone, someone out there can be like, oh man, you got toes or like, oh man, my car keeps breaking down. I keep having all these problems. Oh, you got a car. Wow. must be nice. Oh, my roof keeps leaking or this keeps breaking in my home. Like, oh, you got a roof in a home. Like it can always be worse, you know? And, and I think that to put things in perspective like that, even through the difficulties with the things we have, that it can, it can always be worse and to be thankful for the things that we do have. I agree with you. And you brought a smile to brother JP's face, which is, uh, which is good to see. I like that smile. Brother Rod. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing that Daniel said, you know, <clears throat> like th you can, there can always be something worse. I think it goes the opposite way too, because it allows us to be able to be thankful for what we have and not focus on also what somebody says, because th the opposite happens too. somebody can say, you know, they have this big house or they have this car 
but you know you didn't see two weeks ago <laughs> when he didn't have a car when he didn't have a house and how y'all blessed that that family or that person so i think we have to be mindful of focusing on y'all on both sides of that conversation because many people struggle for years and years and years so that y'all can show them that this you have i gave to you like you strived and you pushed and you fought you couldn't do it but when you surrendered to me i allowed these things to happen in your life so other people can see them so we want to be balanced on both sides of that conversation as well i agree thank you for bringing that forward brother always good to keep everything in the proper context and see things from all different angles because he surely does and that'll help us to be more thankful and appreciative if we can see things from his perspective yeah sister martha you got something else you'd like to add um i want to share something else also um and this is just just, you know, something of feeling because something that the other brother said was that you went at least to this Sakot and there it's there's new believers there and there are people that are starting to walk in this path and I'm a baby in this walk. I mean, I just started in 2017. There's so much more to learn that what I know, it's nothing, nothing to what I still have to learn. And just to throw this in there, um, I feel I'm very thankful for the people that I've encountered in my life that have come, that Father has put them in my life. Those have had, have had patience that sometimes I say things I've learned. I've learned from so many people and they taught me, go to scripture, go here, go there. And sometimes I think that to those that do know more, when you go to these places, there are people that are still learning. It's like having people that know more. It's a blessing having them there because it's like he was saying, it's like they start picking at your brain. It's like, okay, what about this? What about that? So that to me, it's, it's, it's more, I understand um, the perspective that you were saying that you learned, you know, you're, you, you know, you, you've learned so much, but at the same time, you're probably were a blessing to somebody else that's starting in this walk that, you know, sometimes we may not say it, thank you for brother so-and-so, because what he said was so wow, wise, what he said. And for me, it's been a blessing when I meet these people that it's like, okay, I feel a little confused and father puts them in my path. It's like, okay, I'm not confused anymore. Go to the scripture. And I could, sometimes you read the Bible and it's like a little confusing because sometimes you see it in a spiritual way and maybe, you know, it's, it's all guidance. It's all teaching. It's all learning. And it's for y'all. And I think that everybody, you know, is, I'm just thankful for those that know more than me that have taught me so much um, and have had the patience to deal with me, at least in that sense, because sometimes I could be a little bit like, Oh my God, this and this, and this is not connecting. And, but there are those that know more that have taught me so much also. So I'm very thankful for that. You know, I am too, sister. I, I have many people in my life, a uh, couple of them, a couple of brothers right here that uh, have helped me see a lot of things, you know, Brother Jadiel, Brother Rod, Brother JP, Brother Nathaniel. I mean, there's been a lot of people within this uh, assembly that has really helped me grow, see things more clearly than I have before. You know, we all need to have some wisdom in our lives when we don't have all the answers and it isn't always clear. So that's another reason for us to be thankful and appreciative of those around us that he puts in our lives that can help us. And I'm thankful to, that I have every one of you all here to help me. So praise Yahuwah. All righty. Thank you, sister. Once again, brother JP, you gave me a smile. Now I got to hear from you. <laughs> Tell about Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom. That was a, that's some beautiful conversations happening. Um, during your message, I was thinking about uh, during this time for us, you know, just our moving time and and what we've been going through. Uh, there was a there was a lot of times when we weren't really sitting down and reading the scriptures. You know, we were just like caught up, you know, with moving and 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 doing so much. And I was speaking to the brother of Mecca kind of about it yesterday, like, but it was a lot of praying. Like, I would be on my, like, as I'm moving, as I'm walking, as I'm outside, wherever I'm at, I'm like praying. But I was giving thanks, and I'm like, oh, praise you, Yahweh, for this right here. Like, 
wow, like, you know, then I'm seeing a vid, like the, the mountain or whatever it is, and I'm just giving thanks. And, and I started to contemplate on that, you know, during those times, like, like how difficult sometimes, you know, our life can be, you know, where we're, we're hustling and bustling during our, you know, wherever we live. But our connection, like our true connection to Yahuwah is in prayer and in, in that giving thanks and in that conversation, you know, that's where my relationship is at. Of course, his word is vital for the fact that we want to know what he wants from us. Like he gives us his instructions. And so I, I see the balance, but there's a, a huge part of it to me that was, that I was shown during this time that it was the prayer. It was the giving thanks. It was the speaking to him, the, the, the conversation, that relationship, that personal relationship that you have with your heavenly father, you know, yes. I know his, I, I don't know his instructions by heart. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of scriptures. I'm like the brother Nathaniel, when he's at the house, I'm like, Hey, you know, that scripture da, da, da. and he's like, yeah, yeah, this is it. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. You know, I appreciate it. So there's a lot of scriptures. I don't know. I don't remember. Like I don't have them memorized, but my relationship with Yahuwah is what I was so thankful for during this time when I was like, and I, cause at first I was kind of feeling down, like, oh man, you know, I haven't been able to sit down and really read the scriptures. I haven't been able to, you know, cause I'm just like, we got to go, we got to do this. But then I, I felt like in my Ruach, he's like, nah, like I set you here. Like, that's what I felt like he told me. Like I set you here. I gave you this. Now just keep doing what you got to do. And I was like, Man, and it just, it felt good. You know, it's emotional for me because it felt good to know, like, he sees you, like, he, he knows you. And, and, uh, um, and again, the relationship is so beautiful. So just that giving thanks, though, of what I, I, I kept pondering on, just like, you know, the brother Nathaniel was saying, too, like, giving thanks at everything. Like, even, like, when you're, like, I was pounding in these poles because I was trying to put a fence in. And I was like, this dirt is like concrete. And I'm hitting these poles and I'm just like, yeah, thank you, yo. Woo. And I'm like, yeah, like going crazy out there. And the pole would move like one inch into the ground. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I praise you, yo. We're like, you, you're going to give me the strength. I already know. Like, and so in those things, you know, in all things, give thanks, like the scripture says. And that's how I was feeling during this time. And um, during the message today, that's what I was feeling like. I was like, yeah, that's, that's the truth. So I don't know if anybody ever else feels that way um, where they feel like, oh, I haven't been able to read the scriptures. I've been so you know, busy, but the true connection, the most powerful one is in prayer and you know, that giving thanks and speaking to him. You know, we have his scriptures, but he's in us. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I started to see. I said, you know, I started to ponder on all that. Like when I started to, I said, nah, I'm, I ate his, I'm eating his word. It's in me. Like it's in me now. Like that's it. Like there's no, you know what I mean? Like, so praise Yahuwah brother. Shabbat Shalom Mishpaka. Thank you for the, uh, the, the lesson. Praise Yahuwah for giving you this, this message for us today. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. You know, brother, <laughs> You know, you're pounding in, uh, it's time pounding in them stakes and getting only an inch, and you're thankful for that. That's saying a whole lot. <laughs> but you know, it brings back, you know, interesting enough. Uh, this this whole study today played out last night. You know, uh, I was driving. Uh, I guess it was about one o'clock in the morning, heading home, going through a construction zone, and a car's coming at me on my side of the road. I stop, I flash my lights, they keep coming. They hit me. I just got a brand new car, I just bought it. I haven't even had it two weeks yet. My thought was, thank you, Father, that you kept me protected that I didn't get hurt. You know, my car got hurt, but I didn't. And that was the first thing I said, is thank you for protecting me in this. That could have been very bad. You know, head-on collisions aren't never gonna be good. So, you know, this lesson came to life again last night for me, you know, in the middle of 
that situation, believe me, I was very mad. I wasn't a very happy guy. I, you know, probably said some things I shouldn't have said, but you know, when it got done and I calmed down and I, I thought about it, I just said, thank you for protecting me and keeping me in this, that, you know, I seen you in that again, you know, in that moment, you know, some more, some more things I got to work on in my life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> control my anger when I'm in the middle of a heated situation. That's what I needed to work on. So, but I was thankful through it all, even though I was hot, I was still thankful that I was, you know, in his hands and in his care. So, you know, it's all those little things in life, you know, we just, it's a pretty, that relationship, like you said, just knowing he's there, you know, with you, even when you don't have time to study. And there's many times I feel the same way, brother. I get so swamped with life. It just overtakes you sometimes. And, you know, but you said the word is in you, <laughs> you know, you're already uh, chewing on the word and thanking him through the, through the things, you know, that those are the, the really what's important. You know, not getting caught up in the, you know, I don't want to say legalistic things of this life, but really that, you know, you, you get down on yourself. Hey, I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. I should be doing more instead of getting in a negative, you know, like you said, finish what you're doing. Now go into that, you know, because there's, there's reasons that you got to go through certain things and it brings out things <laughs> like it did for me to show me there's more things to work on brother Rick you know you got some more shortcomings that you still got in there you know and I've seen them even through the feast you know there was a there was a lot of self-examining that didn't get done or didn't get revealed through atonement and all those other self-examinations I didn't see them they got revealed to me you know so I can work on them I can I can continue to to be thankful that he keeps showing me my shortcomings in life so I can continue to be purified and, you know, grow and all of those type of things. So I appreciate your input. And uh, does anybody else have anything they'd like to add today to this conversation before we conclude our, our study today? Hallelujah, though, and praise Yahuwah for your safety, brother. Thank you. Keep, keep working, keep working. Huh? <laughs> Shalom, shalom, brother. Shalom. Thank you, brother. Jadiel? Oh. There you are. Did you have something you'd like to add? Yeah. Can you can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Um, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up about uh, not being thankful, and uh, Rod kind of pointed this out when it, when it comes to the other thought, um, not being thankful is also a part of being uh, covetous. Um, because many people say that covetous is the only commandment that's inward. It's, it's everything. It's inward. <laughs> Every command you break the commands inward, you keep them inward and you manifest what's inside, you know? So um, when you're not thankful, guess what you're starting to do? You start to pursue things that you don't have. You start to pursue things that that's not yours. You start to desire things that you don't have because you're not grateful for the things that you have. Covetousness, is a man the manifestation of covetousness is the pursuits of things that you don't need you know so we need to recognize the things that we the way that we're living is based off of everything that's inside and when we work so hard and exhaust ourselves to pursue after things that don't even glorify yeah it just it just makes things what more convenient more entertaining more you know whatever it is when we don't have it and then we take time away from, yeah, we take time away from our children, take time away from, you know, the brethren. Sometimes we like somebody, we know somebody needs help, somebody needs to be talked to. And we're like, no, I can't talk to you right now because I got to go make this money or, or something else. You know, not being grateful and thankful and appreciative for the things that you have is covetousness because it's going to cause you to pursue after things that you don't even need. And it's going to just, you know, bring you further and further away from from having your mind completely submitted to Yah. Wow, I hadn't even connected those, brother. I thank you for pointing that out, but that makes a lot of sense to me. I didn't really ever think about it in that sense, but that's true, you know. Um, <laughs> it's amazing when you start really examining these things and how they reveal things you don't even notice, and that's a big one. I didn't even connect that, but you're right. 
You know, it, it does bring us to that place, which is dangerous. So maybe that's the other aspect of, of being unappreciative is that it brings you into covetedness because you're always looking at what everybody else has and desiring those things instead of what he wants for you. That's, that's a great point. That's another, another thought that will help us to grow in this understanding of being grateful and thankful for everything. So thank you, brother, for sharing that. Anything else we'd like to add to, before we conclude? Because that was pretty good. That was a good way to finish it. So if nothing else, thank you guys for your participation today. All your input's been wonderful. And uh, continue to be thankful and grateful. Thank you, Father. We thank you for this day and for the study and for all that you keep doing in this assembly. We appreciate you and we thank you. Shabbat shalom, everybody.